Yo, what's up guys? So it's been a long time. Excuse my eyes. It's pretty sunny. Yeah, cloudy outside. It's weird. We just had a tropical storm hit us. And it stopped raining. And as you guys talked about the last video, we just installed bags onto my car, finally. And now, I have too much camera in the front. I try to add some pictures or even a clip after this to show you guys. So how am I gonna fix that? Well, I got something in the mail. It's front camber arms from Megan Racing. So I know I, got t I talk pretty fast on videos, but I also talk really fast in person as well. So I'm gonna try to slow myself down so you guys can hear me and listen. I'm sorry for being gone for so long. I done with school already, so I'm just glad. Just a lot of working, a lot of working. Gotta, gotta pay off these bags somehow, you know? Gotta pay off all the car mods in the future and hopefully it doesn't rain on us because there's a fat cloud right there you guys can't see. But it's the MRS LX0373 by Megan Racing. Hopefully it's in focus. I am not too sure. And the reason why I got these is because my air out, my front camber is like a lot compared to my rear and I don't have that much of a aggressive wheel specs yet. Who knows I'm gonna get new wheels whenever the wife lets me. I highly doubt she will. But maybe after the wide body, I, I wanna do that in the future someday. So bags was like a dream mod for me as explained in the previous video. And so, you know, yeah. <laughs> Excuse the height right now. This is my red height. I know it's pretty high and I'm sorry I am bitching out because I don't wanna break my shit. I bought bags so I won't have to scrape on anything and still air out and be with a low stance. I bought this car for a stance in the first place, so I want it to look good. That's the reason why I bought this car. So let's go into the camera. Excuse me being tank top, because I am trying to get a tan. I have a really bad farmer's tan. I don't know if you guys can see it. I like the line right here. I have a very bad farmer's tan. So I'm trying to get that resolved by wearing tank top. So the first thing you first open the box, will be Megan Racing stickers as well as tiny stickers and a warranty card. And go straight into it. Hopefully I can show you guys like right here. I don't want to turn on the camera because I don't want to turn on or turn around my mic. But here you go. It goes straight into the camera arms and the paint on Megan Racing never fail and it's really sunny all of a sudden. So I have, if you guys know, I have Megan Racing's rear toe arms and soon to come in rear traction arms. So might as well just go full of Megan Racing suspension components, you know? So here is the toe arm. Let's get some B-roll. I'm trying to get some B-roll of more footage wise. I'm trying to get everything set. Oh, it's really bright. but. I'm trying to upgrade on some content on my footage, so hope you guys enjoy it. Let's hit this B-roll. Alright, since I had to do B-roll anyway, so I might as well turn the camera around so you can see my hands and see a first person view of everything. So this is the camera arms. I got it on eBay, I'll leave the link down below. And the seller shipped it in a really good box, except for he did, there was some marking like right here. And I think one more on somewhere. I think it's not on this one, but maybe the other arm. There's another marking of just paint missing. And it's fine and all. I mean, it's gonna be on the car anyways. Me putting it on the ground doesn't make it any better as well. But I'm gonna try it that way. So I'm trying to talk slower. I'm sorry, let me get used to it. I'd normally talk fast in real life if you ever met me in real life, which I don't think I have met any of you guys yet. But I'm trying to talk slower, quieter, and everything so you guys can understand. But this is the left side, it's even labeled. I'm actually gonna carry it this way. It's labeled the L. I have never did front control arms ever, not even on my old car. I'm pretty sure I'm assuming that it just Loosen all these, and then it moves all these. I try to watch some videos on anyone trying to explain how to adjust these, and Aaron just talks about how to install it. I know how to install it, you just get the two bolts right here, that I'm aware of anyways, and you tell the sun's going in and out. 
but as I am aware of, no one has a video. Oh wow, no one has a video of telling you how to adjust it. I'm pretty sure that's how you adjust it. I could be wrong. First time installing this, so I'm about to find out. What's really great is that it came with these pens. Let me see if I can find it right here. So if you guys know, on stock 3IS suspensions, right there, it comes with pins to lock the front control arms. So it comes with aftermarket pins, so those are pretty nice. And we're gonna get started. And if you guys haven't known, my wheel face is back to the machine. So we're gonna be dipping the fronts later. I know you guys are saying, why dip it? I'm gonna explain that in a future video. So you guys stay tuned for that. I have a lot planned. Who knows when this video is going to be coming out because I have a lot to edit and I don't know when this is going to be edited or not. Uh, who knows when this video is going to be coming out. I know this video is going to be coming out after the bag video. So doing the bag video, you'll already see this arm installed if you guys are paying attention. So that's the reason why because I want to adjust this quarter the strut itself so I air out I don't want to touch the ground at least on the side skirt part anyways so that's my future plans if you guys are any curious or why my face is machine again there's your answer it used to be bronze and I removed it I'm gonna change the color of the face again so stay tuned to that in a future video enough chit chatting let's go straight into installing the front camera arms so I can't leave y'all hanging Instead of adding a picture for the air, uh, the camber, I'll do both. I'm going to air out and show you guys this way as well. This is currently the max height as of today. I haven't adjusted the stretch yet. So this is the max height I set. I only set it to 90 PSI as my max because I'm a little, a little bit worried. Because I think it's ready for like 100, 100 PSI. But I don't want to go over it in case it does get too, too much pressure and pops. So I just want to be careful about that. So this is max height. Now I'm gonna air out for you guys. So as you guys can see, my rears, they look not bad camber, like slightly poking a little bit, like slightly was slightly tucking with a little bit of camber. That's not bad camber. But this that's a little too much if you ask me so i kind of want to match my front to my rear like that's kind of insane let's go straight to a back shot like if you ask me like if you ask me well maybe they are pretty similar but the front looks like it's too much maybe this rear might be too much but i don't know like i don't know if i could even like that's pretty getting kind of close to the quarter panel so I don't know if it'll air out I don't know if it's gonna be any better but like the front is a lot of camber it's not personally too much camber it's not my taste unless you have really aggressive wheels which mine are tucking like crazy so let's change that and install the camber arms so you guys probably saw this before but this is the upper control arm for the front so the reason why I chose upper control arm for my camber I think this is like some rear ones or some other ones is because with the front if you like camber it in it does more because like here's a strut if it does it from the front it has more adjustments so it's pretty simple all you have to do is loosen this bolt and then just check up the car and then we can see if we could try to remove the rear bolt without removing the strut so I, I just cut the part of me jacking up my car because you probably you guys probably see me jack up my car like a million times so a quick time lapse of me just removing this this bolt it's really easy and then the inside bolts what I'm worried about so maybe try to remove the inside bolt first and maybe loosen it and then we'll do this one so we're gonna see what we're gonna do first Alright, so with the whole suspension removed, I guess I'm well, just letting it sit right here for now. So I'm going to try to remove the inside bolt, which I believe there are 14. 
So that's what I'm gonna do next. So right off the bat, I noticed that with this one, you can move it. This one, you can't because it's camber arms. And it looks pretty straight, so I'm actually just install it like this and see how that works. So, all right, time for the install. It's raining. Got my little tent right here. And I did notice something with this that is, it has washers with it, all right? And I noticed that with the washers on the upper control arm, it does not go in all the way. So I removed it and it goes in too deep now. There's this holes where you put the pen in for the nut and then the nut's like way past the hole. So I'll figure it out what I wanna do. If I should tighten this all the way up, or should I stop for the pen to go through? Those are my options. So we're gonna see. We're gonna find out. And wait for the stone to pass. So we're trying to figure out how to do it while the rain is going on. The rain has gone away, and I finished this. So this is what I came in conclusion with, that it goes all the way up and it just goes right under it, I guess. I won't accidentally untwist itself. I don't remember my brake line being so close to my sway bar. Uh, I guess I'll check the other side and figure that out. I didn't tighten this all the way. Like, it was super tight where it wouldn't move. So I loosened it a little bit so it can move with this, uh, whatever this is called. And the reason why I figured that that, that pin was like that, because this is the OEM one right here. That focus. You see, it has that notch. That notch is to help connect it to the nut, which is where to go. Over here. It has that mark so you can put on it right there like this one does but this one's a straight pin so there's no way it would connect through here you have to go through the hole like this or like through this notch which i don't think is possible but it'd be too loose so this is what i concluded with this is straight from i haven't touched anything with the camber adjustment i'm gonna install the wheel and see how it looks so the wheel is back on and it looks like camber zeroed itself out like dang I'm pretty impressed. I didn't even touch anything yet. So, dang. And as you know, like I always do, I'm gonna install the other side now and just time us the whole thing. Hope I can get a good view of it. And I'm sorry if I can't. And just let me know if you have any questions. If you like the videos, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more card content, and we're gonna be doing more stuff to my Lexus eventually. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas. Even if you, guys, if you guys have any ideas, let me know and we can make it happen. All right, time for the installation of the other side. Hopefully, I can start pretty quick. I'll test it. I'll always test things out with this side. It's getting kind of dark now, so hopefully, we can finish before it gets dark. All right, let's get it. Yo, welcome back, guys. So, it's the next few days now. So, the reason why that I didn't record the other side, both of the sides are on right now but it's because it started to rain really bad and it's still about to rain. Same thing like last time I'm recording after a storm because it's been raining like every single day but I want to get my fitment in so I want to get this camera arm in and I noticed that I didn't tighten it all the way down so there was some bumping and popping so I think this is the cause of it so I gotta take it out and do it again and then I also want to add more camber to the front Zero came in, those does look really good aired out, but I do want my to get negative one to avoid any further issues because I've noticed that when I air out, there is some issues. So that's the plan for today. 
I asked my friend a few things and then he said he recommends a few things people should do. Like use the OEM nut compared to using the Megan Racing nut. So I'll try to use that, see if it has anything different. He says OEM stuff's always usually try to be better, you know. Make it make sense. So I'm gonna try to do that today. So that's what my goal is today. Adjusting negative one, tightening everything down and using OEM parts again on it. I do have a tent today. So hopefully if it does rain, we still have protection. Cause you know, protection. You gotta use it. Alright. Let's get straight into the video. I'm sorry if this is super everywhere and whack. Still give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more car content. And hopefully we get this thing done not today. Hopefully it doesn't rain out really bad. I see a really bad dark cloud out there. I hope it's going to run out of batteries neither because I didn't think I would need it to charge. That's what we did today. So let's get started. So if you do use the OEM, or not OEM, but Mega Racing stuff, this is what I did. So I got the pin and did like that so it won't pull out easily and then you just tighten that down. So that's what I did for the Megan Racing if you're ever interested or curious. Alright, so this is how I adjust the camber. So I used my digital bubble level and I set the how it was before to zero. And I want to add a negative degree. So I don't know if you can see it, it's not on. Well you can see like that, it says 0.4. And all I do is loosen the top keys right here. The top iron keys and these are about five that I had experience with. And you just loosen all of them and you just, you just, you just move it now with your hand. You just push it. Wait, you can just see it moving. That's how you adjust the camber. So I'm gonna do negative one. And if you guys are ever curious, that's how you adjust camber with the upper front camber arms on the Lexus 3IS. Alright, so I end up removing the washer because the pin, the OEM pin, didn't fit through the hole with the washer on. So I removed the washer and the pen goes right through and the OEM bolt's on and it's, everything's good. Not bad of a fix and adjustment, that's not bad at all. So time to put the wheels on and let's test the fitment. 